context we were we've been running our audio program in mostly urban parts of delhi and then with the pandemic multiple things happened and we also started to reach families in the rural rural parts of the country i think I'll, we just recently did a survey so i'll just bring some some highlights and few points which my team discovered uh one was smartphone access we saw that of course i think everybody understands that it's mostly higher it was higher in the urban centers pretty high actually it was crossing like 75% i'm actually looking for the presentation itself so i can read out the exact stats and we also had a split between the father and the mother where the access was higher with the father and we saw the same pattern in rural india where i think the mother the the mothers mostly if i'm just talking about smartphones smartphone access was at 35% but i think the fathers was more fathers had it and i don't think none of this is any none of this is actually surprising because we know that the gender split exists but it's interesting to know that smartphone penetration is increasing uh, i think it's already high in urban areas and it's also on the rise in rural centers but we cannot paint everything with the same brush because you know every couple kilometers things change so <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to make any sweeping statement, but from the little survey we did, this is something we found. Then again, not specific to any geography, and Akshay Simant might have something to add here. Saja, we have worked at with both rural tribal families in Maharashtra, and I personally uh, have led projects in tribal Maharashtra as well as in urban centers of uh, Maharashtra, including Bhiwandi, Mumbai, etc. Uh, so, like Arushi mentioned, there were of course disparities in terms of access to technology. which also sort of shaped the kind of interventions that we were doing so in urban spaces our techno our interventions were more technology and internet uh, enabled you know we were doing say whatsapp bot we were sending online videos etc on the other hand uh, what we pushed in rural areas were actually field work you know actually sending teachers home and at the same time also having automated phone calls uh, to parents because feature phones were something that was largely available even in rural families but smartphones were not so that kind of disparity existed but at least i think from the schools and the output that was going to families was largely internet based what was you know there was this reliance on the diksha app or swadhyay uh, so there was a lot of on the stress on online education i thought i saw was you know fairly similar in both urban and rural areas what i saw most interesting i think in terms of like you see the question initially was what are the kind of interesting patterns that you saw among parents was how quickly parents were able to adapt uh, to the reliance on technology also in the sense ki the kind of uh, intent and motivation that parents had ki okay now we are you know shifting to a new reality where our kids are learning from say google meet or zoom or ya fir uh, jo curriculum hai whatsapp par aa raha hai to usko kaise chalate hai we have a helpline for parents at the run at saja and we used to get so many calls from parents saying ki google meet kaise chalate hai karke aap batao to wo, wo teacher jo hai admit nahi kar rahi hai class mein to fir kis tarah se usko kiya jaye and these are parents who probably had no understanding of what zoom was or google meet was before this and just to be able to ensure that they were you know good facilitators of education at their homes uh, the fact that parents were able to quickly adapt to that reality also and to the lens that parents went to actually ensuring that ki bhale mazduri nahi mil rahi hai par ek smartphone kharidenge bacche ke liye ki hum log चाहे जो पैसे जुटा कर हम एक फोन खरीदेंगे उनके ताकि वो लोग उसको यूज कर रहे हैं उस चीजों को दैट इज समथिंग दैट आई फाउंड रियली इनक्रेडिबल द वे पेरेंट्स एक्सेलरेटेड देयर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी जस्ट सो दैट दे कुड प्रोवाइड अ बेटर एटमॉस्फेयर फॉर द चिल्ड्रन एट होम थैंक टू व्हाट अक्षय पॉइंट आउट आई हैव अ स्मॉल एनेक्डोट व्हिच हैपेंड इन माय ओन टीम वी हैव वी हैव अबाउट 10 वुमेन हु वर्क विद अस एंड मोस्ट ऑफ देम आर मदर्स and uh, before covid i remember whenever i had to work with them they used to do field work and you no know, go out meet families add them to our program and these were women who would refuse to even fill out an online form and it be like the relocation nahi chal raha ni whatsapp nahi karna nothing they were just they were just scared of their smartphones and today they're like oh we'll get on a zoom call and you know we'll all chat i'm like wow things like just the way things change and it i think just necessity has made this happen then akshay is absolutely right we also heard from families who were like oh i need to buy a smartphone like you know and livelihoods were massively hit we had situations where parents didn't have money to drop a missed call on our number because there was no balance and they didn't have money to recharge so it's been pretty extreme but we just really goes to show that fa- parents are just so resilient and it's scary <laughs> but the kind of things they're willing to do for their children it's amazing i think ye jo access wala point hai to the one around smartphones and feature phones has been i mean spoken about a lot and also been documented a lot so won't talk about it i think what we saw primarily 
I would say behaviorally or essentially in the family structure, what was happening was that, you know, this was the first time that um, the entire family was stuck together for like years and years. <laughs> it seemed like it was years and years, but um, so I think a lot of families were still figuring out how to live together. I think it happened to me personally, definitely. I'm sure that it happened to a lot of us. Um, within the families, we saw uh, a little bit of violence, um, you know, against the mothers and the children essentially increased. We saw um, um, really, uh, I think the the burden of work that mothers or uh, women had in the family, um, specifically mothers of children that we work with, uh, had sort of increased because, you know, 24-7 then you had access. Um, you did have access to everyone in the family, which was a good and a bad thing in, in a way because, you know, a lot of the household work sort of increased for them um, and that sort of created challenge. I think there was a lot of stress that we saw um, on the mother's side. Um, if she is somebody who is... Um, you know, a homemaker, even if she is somebody who goes out and works because work wasn't there. On the father's side, because traditionally in the rural setup, you see a lot of men working and women not working. You also see men and women both actually going to the fields. What we also saw is that men, because they were mostly in the house, were also kind of, I would say, uh, in, the, in the surveys that we did, frustrated from the fact that they had to be uh, in that sort of uh, environment for that long without work. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, I think overall what we saw was a lot of stress essentially in the household. Um, and this was true, I think, both for urban and sort of rural settings. I, I don't think that there was that much of a difference there. Um, access in terms of phones, of course, was a challenge. But I think, um, and maybe, you know, we when we discuss about it in terms of what has, what has been the response of NGOs and the government systems, uh, maybe... I don't know, we, we'll discuss it later. I think there, there are nuances there that one can talk about. In terms of access, I think we saw a lot of uh, actually community specifically. So we, our work is now in Punjab, Uttarakhand, Maharashtra. Um, we've done some work in Bihar as well. What we saw was that, you know, there were groups of sort of people, groups of parents who bought a smartphone together where um, the uh, Anganwadi worker or the teacher would actually come and, you know, work with the kids in a, sort of socially distance, kind of maintaining social distancing and, and still be able to sort of work with the, uh, with the children. Uh, we saw actually uh, neighbors and friends of, uh, you know, uh, families who were accessing Anganwadis and schools that we were servicing, um, you know, they actually get content on their smartphones and then sort of transfer it to uh, or share what are the activities that they have to do uh, with the parents of these, of these uh, targets, you know, target beneficiaries essentially. Um, so we saw a lot of collaboration, to be honest, and we also saw a lot of, uh, I, I would say, courage um, and courage that uh, specifically I would sort of earmark and say, you know, folks like Anganwadi workers and teachers, essentially, we saw a lot of courage from them um, that they were able to actually get out of um, their households and still go and, you know, meet with parents and actually tell them what they should be doing at this juncture. Um, I think uh, courage that uh, a lot of us and of course the country will be thankful for um, as we sort of move forward because I feel like a lot of families have uh, from from our experience has emerged out stronger out of this COVID situation uh, just because uh, you know there were people like special people on the ground who were actually you know able to do this. One last point I think I would I would sort of uh, definitely put out is that collectively I think although maybe I'm nitpicking but I'm saying collectively I think we failed we didn't have a contingency plan um overall i mean it's nobody knew or could have foreseen that we would have a pandemic where everything would shut down but i i think it also points out the fact that you can't plan for everything but we didn't have a contingency plan uh, the governments the ngos uh, civil society uh, but we did whatever we could um uh, you know as as much as possible uh, but i think uh, i am slightly disappointed actually with the response that we had collectively as civil societies as ngos as well as with the government because i think the eventual conversation became about, oh, you know, parents have smartphones versus parents don't. I think that is definitely a relevant conversation. That is something that should have been the focus, definitely. But I think we, outside of that, uh, we actually didn't leverage the relationships that teachers or Anganwadi workers or community workers actually had with the parents. I think if you would have focused more on even empowering and enabling those last mile delivery people, uh, who's the Anganwadi worker, who's your teacher, who's a community worker, I think if you were just focused on them, I think the rest would have settled itself. In some way it did, uh, but I'm just saying that I think 
maybe somewhere we let the the this idea of smartphone versus feature phone take over um which is an important topic to discuss and i think there are interesting solutions that one can do but i do think that you know um from just the delivery perspective and interaction with the parents perspective i thought that um if you would have focused all our energies on empowering and uh, you know these teachers and and anganwadi workers i think uh, things would have been slightly even better i would say than they are now Thank you.